Hi everyone, this is Nian. Today I'm going to be painting these Chinese Ming vase or blue porcelain vases again since a lot of you guys seem interested from the previous video. In terms of instructions though, I think it's fairly straightforward since it's something that I've shared before and I just followed the exact same steps. And I really had to speed this one up because the whole thing took me around 3 hours to finish. So I hope it's clear enough for you to still see the steps. The painting itself didn't actually take too long but I did a lot of erasing as you can see when I'm drawing it out. Because I wasn't too sure of the exact shapes that I wanted to go for even though I had a rough idea and I did have a rough sketch. I'm also not very good at drawing symmetrical objects, especially mirrored, as I mentioned before in my older videos, which is why I like to at least draw a rough grid to give me a little bit of guideline for me to follow. As I was drawing these out, I also realized that it was much easier to draw accurately when I have a full bird's eye view, so sometimes I like to stand up to get a better perspective. I just find that when I try to draw quite a large object that requires accuracy, sitting down doesn't actually cut it for me due to the angle distortion and everything just end up looking wonky once I stood up and look at it right from above. So that's just a small tip for you if you have the same problems as I do. Another tip is to draw on a separate paper first. This can be a sketch paper or even just really cheap print paper if you're heavy handed because if you raise too much and you press down too hard on watercolor paper it might damage the paper so even though i did a lot of erasing i have somewhat learned to handle my ha bad habits in terms of putting too much pressure so sometimes i feel like i have it under control but it's always safer to draw on scrap paper and trace it to your watercolor paper if you still find it difficult to control the pressure while you're sketching but if drawing is not your thing and you just want to paint, I'll also have the vase template in my coffee shop. I'll also include a couple of different shapes individually and you can just mix and match and try to create your own composition if you would like to. And maybe just trace a few and try to paint different patterns if you feel inspired to experiment yourself and try different designs. And for this last one, I decided to paint a jar instead because I think varying the shape of the lid would be fun but drawing it wasn't so fun as you can see so hopefully the template would help you if you struggle like I do. Before I start painting, I make sure that the outline is nice and clean and I just erase any unwanted lines and try to clean out the line art as much as I can so it doesn't distract from the painting. But of course, if you're just tracing from the template, there would be no need to draw and erase the guidelines. So for the vases, just like in my previous video of the orange tree, I'll just be using three colors which are ultramarine deep, prussian blue, and moon glow. I'm going to mix all of these three colors together for the base of the vase in a very thin consistency. Since the vase will have a blue pattern and the design will be placed on top of white porcelain, I'm going to use this as my neutral color to add the shadow on the vase to create the three-dimensional form. What I like to do is to start by wetting the surface with a very very thin consistency of the color that I just mixed which I feel would have a bit of shadow and this would pretty much be the whole vase apart from the largest protruding area for this first one and as you can see the consistency is so light that it looks pretty much like nothing or just slightly tinted water and I always try to be as careful as I can whenever I'm creating form on a supposedly white surface and it's always best to work from the lightest consistency so you can slowly build up the color. This way it's much easier to create the transition from dark to light and light to dark. To create the transition, I tried to soften the lines that I just painted with a clean damp brush to sweep through the colors towards the white area until it creates 
sort of like a soft gradation this goes for all parts of the curve so like this first one I'm going to create the same thing for the lid as well as it has those sections where I need to create the distinct separation with this neutral tone for this one the darkest part that I have created would be the bottom of the lid because those areas will most likely be in shadow and I would say that this is probably the more complex one for the stage because of the lids and the sections in the lids but this makes the rest of the vases quite simple to paint if you understand this one if you feel like the paper is a bit too wet and it's no longer taking any more color feel free to work on the other ones first before going back to the first one because sometimes if the paper is soaked through the paint will just spread creating a bloom when it dries so i personally like to just leave it to dry first and just Add a layer on top once the paper can take more paint plus it's always better to see how the value of the color settles once it's dry and it's a bit faded so you know how much to add on For the hole at the top, I like to paint it with a light to medium consistency first instead of the very light consistency. Then I soften the rest with a clean damp brush just like before until I fill in the rest of the area with a softer tone. I don't think I'm going to do too much talking for this one because I'm just basically following the same method for the next two vases. So I hope you just enjoy the soft music while watching me finish paint the base colors. I'm almost done here with the base color but then I realized that in my rough sketch I actually wanted the middle vase to have handles on both sides and I seem to have forgotten about it so I'm just going to sketch it in and paint the base color as well for the handle so I can let it dry and settle while I work on the first design of the jar. I tried to paint most of the shadows on the side where the handle is facing the vase and I just add more shadow at the top and the bottom part as it's closer to the vase which would be more in shadow and while the surface is still damp I like to just add on a medium consistency of the neutral tone. For all the vases or pots or jars, whatever these are and whatever you're making, I always like to start by sectioning out the areas first so I don't go over the line and for this, you can go straight in with your paint or use pencil first if your hands are a bit wobbly like mine was here. So I decided to just draw it out with pencil first but if you decide to do this, just make sure that the paper is completely bone dry or else if you try to erase the pencil, you might end up damaging the paper instead. So just make sure it's completely dry all throughout before drawing it out. This is also very important before you paint on the blue pattern or blue design because if your base color is still a bit wet, the dark blue might end up traveling across the base color which isn't something that you want. I forgot to mention the color that I used for the blue design is a mixture of ultramarine deep with Prussian blue just like what I did with 
the orange tree tutorial that I posted before then after I paint those sections I like to start with the smaller patterns first to fill in those tiny areas before painting the main large design but you can also do this the other way if you find that more comfortable to see what complements the main design. I personally like to draw it out on a scrap piece of paper first as ideation so I know the patterns that I would like to include when I'm painting or you can also draw it out on the vase with pencil lightly just like what we did with the lines. For the first vase, I'm going to create a willow tree design with clouds surrounding it. This was requested by one of you, I'm sorry I don't remember who exactly but I hope you're watching this whoever you are and enjoying this one. So for this first one, I started with the surface of where I'm going to paint the tree. I intentionally made the surface go on an angle to give it a bit more movement. This way I can play a bit more with the branches. And I started with a medium consistency so I can use a very thick consistency for the branches. And this creates more interest and give it different values as we're only using one color. After I'm done painting a few branches, I just use the tip of my brush to tap lightly and run it downwards to create the leaves. And with this, I used a medium to light consistency so I can build up on the color which gives this a bit more depth. So after I'm done placing most of them, I use a thicker consistency to go over it again. And I use the same method but I don't paint on all of the parts so I leave parts of the lighter consistency and this just adds a bit more depth to the design. After that, I found that the left side was a bit too empty, so I decided to make a really small background using a fairly light consistency, so it looks like it's the background instead of the foreground to separate those two sections. Then I fill in the rest of the space with squiggly clouds. I started with a thick consistency first, and then I'm going to add a bit more detail using a lighter consistency, and then softening the colors to give it a bit of gradation. To finish off the vase, I like to go back in with a neutral tone before with added moon glow and a light consistency to further enhance the form. This is optional but for mine I felt like it was a bit too flat after I've placed the design. So I just decided to do that and also add a bit more detail with a thick consistency of the blue mix. I just use a dry brush consistency and flick using the tip of my brush to create the grassy texture. Moving on to the second design, I'm going to start off by sectioning out the vase first, just like what I did with the previous one. And for this one, I want the vase to have bird design. And as you guys know, I am never comfortable with drawing out anatomy of animals. So I decided to draw this out with pencil first and also draw the main branch that the bird is going to be sitting on. So I have a bit of guidance when I'm going to paint it later. Once I have the basic composition, I'm just going to approach this the same way by painting the lines first in a very thick consistency of the blue mixture. Then I'm going to draw out the patterns just like what I did with the previous vase.
So for this part of the design, I actually had no idea what I wanted to put there. But since it's quite a small area, I just did squiggles with my brush. I'm not sure what I was making there, but I think it looks alright in the end. For the bird, I like to start off with the outline first and the details of the wings and then I fill in the rest using a thinner consistency to add on a bit more detail to the bird. I wasn't too sure about the pattern because I didn't really use a reference picture for this so I just made up whatever and I'm not sure if this is a real bird or not, it's just something that I made up. In terms of the branches, I used a medium consistency instead of a very thick consistency like what I used for the willow tree but after watching this, I think I would have preferred it to be a bit darker than this. I also added smaller branches for a bit of detail and some decorative elements like the leaves, flower buds, and also simple five petal flowers. I used the medium to light consistency for the leaves and the flowers at first so I can lay around the thicker consistency to add the details like the midrib for the leaves and the stamen of the flowers. Just like the first one, I'm going to enhance the form of the vase, so I just use the neutral tone in a thin consistency and soften it until I get a nice gradation. So let's move on to the third and final vase. For this one, I noticed that the bottom left side is a bit wonky and I ended up fixing it. However, I didn't exactly film it so I'm very sorry about that so I'll try to explain what I did at the end. I used the same color of the neutral tone to add more to the left side so it's not too curved in. but. At that point, the outline was still there, so I ended up using part of the design to cover the mistake. So hopefully this is useful for you if you have the same mistake as I did. Again, for this one, I started out by drawing out the sections, then adding some of the patterns, and then moving on to the design, which for this one, I decided to paint a bamboo design which was requested by another one of my viewers. I actually have a porcelain seat at home. I'm not sure if it's a seat but it's just there as decoration and it has a bamboo design so I was inspired by it even though I didn't really end up copying the actual design which is much better than what I painted here.
To paint the bamboos, I used the tip of my brush to paint the little sections and I just played around with the thickness creating thicker and thinner bamboos. You can control this with the pressure and how much contact you have on the tip of your brush with the paper. I started out with a medium consistency and I added a thicker and darker blue on one of the side and I just thought that this will help make the bamboo look less flat. As for the leaves, I add new layers using different values to give the design a bushier effect without the painting looking too heavy. So for these simple designs, the main thing that I thought about was the angle in which the bamboos are crossing each other and also the heaviest part of the design which are the leaves that I designed to be heavily placed on the bottom left and the top right for a diagonal composition. I also like to play around with the size and just try to vary it since the subject itself is fairly simple. So that's it for the three designs and to finish everything off I'm just going to add the shadows underneath. I first used the neutral tone in a medium consistency to paint the base of the vase and as for the subtle cast shadow I decided to change up the tone slightly by introducing grey of grey to separate the color and I also used a bit more moon glow in the mixture compared to what I use for the base color of the vase. I just paint the cast shadow using a light to medium consistency and I just create an oval shape then I soften it towards the outside using a clean damp brush just like what I did with the base color of the vase and then slowly layering the dark color and placing it near the vase until I'm happy with the value of the cast shadow. So that's pretty much it for this painting. I'm sorry I had to really speed this one up since it took way longer than expected, but hopefully it was still enjoyable for you to watch. Like usual, all of the tools as well as my social media links will be listed in the description box. If you're still here, thank you so much for watching till the end and I'll see you at the next one. Bye!